Good afternoon and welcome everyone back to the Georgia Tech Manufacturing Institute Lunch and Learn series. Uh, my name is Dr. Billy D. Brown and I'm a senior research faculty and EWD director for GTMI. Uh, before I introduce today's speaker, I just want to make a first a brief introduction to uh, GTMI um, as well as give some brief instructions for the audience. The Georgia Tech Manufacturing Institute is one of 11 uh, interdisciplinary research institutes at Georgia Tech that uniquely focuses on manufacturing research, development, and deployment. We help tackle the grand challenges of today's manufacturers and assist partners in moving innovations from the lab to the market. GTMI has a wide variety of facilities and equipment located on main campus for basic research, uh, as well as on 14th Street nearby for applied research in our advanced manufacturing pilot facility. Uh, GTMI's mission includes education and workforce development, uh, collaborative partnerships with industry, academia, and government, as well as thought leaderships. GTMI hosts a Lunch and Learn series each semester. Um, this, this fall, the sessions are held every Monday at noon as live online events. These sessions are excellent opportunities for Georgia Tech faculty, undergraduate and graduate level researchers and students, uh, as well as a global manufacturing community to learn and share advanced manufacturing knowledge. To ensure a smooth presentation experience, all audience members are currently muted. Uh, please use the question and answer panel on your screen to submit questions for the speaker. Uh, I encourage you to go ahead and, and submit those questions as soon as you have them uh, formulated so that um, uh, Jay, uh, the speaker will be able to address them at the end of the presentation. So today I'm pleased to introduce Jay Richardson, who will discuss uh, Beyond the Electric Automobile, Electrifying Off-Road Vehicles and Equipment at Te Textron Specialized Vehicles. Uh, Jay leads a team of engineers dedicated to the research and development of new technologies and products across the company's brand and product lines. Uh, the team's designs, scopes, uh, the team designs, scopes, and prototypes potential new products and improvements to existing models in response to customer needs and emerging technologies. The Advanced Concepts team also leads the company's initiatives to electrify a diverse product lines to respond to growing customer demand for electric products and drive sustainability forward. During Jay's career at Textron, Jay has worked in multiple leadership roles across engineering in addition to his current role. Uh, his past assignment included being an uh, engineering lead for the company's cost out initiatives and work as he worked as a mechanical engineer as, as, and as a manufacturing engineer responsible for assisting in the design of new products to streamline integration into the company's integrated supply chain. Uh, Jay holds a, a bachelor's and a master's degree in mechanical engineering from Clemson University with an emphasis on design for manufacturing. He also earned an MBA uh, from Augusta University. In today's session, Jay uh, Richardson will give an overview of Textron Specialized Vehicles Incorporated and their manufacturing operations uh, in, in Augusta and future operations in Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, th this includes manufacturing of products ranging from easy go golf carts to Arctic Cat snowmobiles to Textron ground support equipment. Jay will discuss how a small team of dedicated engineers is working to transform the company's diverse product lines, integrating the latest technology to create high performance, electrically powered machines that exceed customers' expectations. Uh, also, they help reduce carbon footprint and drive toward a more sustainable future. Uh, Jay, it's great, it's great to see you and I'm looking forward to your presentation. You may now begin. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Jay Richardson, uh, and I am the Director for Advanced Concepts here at, at TSV. Um, we're headquartered out of uh, Augusta, Georgia. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I'm very excited to uh, share our company's story and how my team works uh, on the next generation uh, of, of products here uh, at TSV. Um, uh, you know, Primarily, uh, you know, in, in the news and, and the, the focus for electric, electric mobility uh, is usually on on-road vehicles, um, which is awesome, which is really cool. And, and I love reading about it and hearing about it. Uh, but here at TSV, you know, we're working on, you know, all the things that aren't on-road. 
Um, and so I'm, uh, again, excited to, to talk about how we're kind of transforming the different industries that TSV serves. Uh, so a little bit of history. Um, we were founded as EasyGo um, back in 1954 here in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, in the 1960s, we were acquired by Textron, uh, which is our still our parent corporation today. Uh, we have about 3,100 employees across all of our different uh, manufacturing locations, uh, as well as various different service centers uh, that support our different businesses. Um, and so some of the different product lines that you may know us for are golf cars and PTVs that we sell under the EasyGo brand name our side-by-sides and ATVs uh, that we sell under the Articat brand name, uh, as well as our snowmobiles. We have commercial uh, turf care equipment uh, that we sell under the Jacobson and Ransoms brands, and also uh, aviation ground support equipment. So basically everything you see in an airport that isn't an airplane, uh, we sell under the, the Textron GSE kind of family of brands, um, which most familiar that, uh, that people know is, is Tug. Um, so <clears throat> one of the things um, that's that's special about us um, is that we serve, you know, all these different industries um, and we're working on electrification in each one of them. Uh, so a little bit about of our, our parent corporation, Textron. Um, so you probably don't have not heard of Textron, but you've certainly heard of some of the brands that uh, represent Textron. Uh, so first we have Bell. Um, so it's a helicopter company based out of uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and so its primary primary contracts are, are with the military, um, you know, doing the B-22 Osprey, uh, which we partner with Boeing on and, and sell to the U.S. Marine Corps and Air Force and Navy. Um, and then we make a lot of traditional, more traditional helicopters uh, for commercial use as, as well. Uh, Textron Aviation, which is based out of Wichita, Kansas, um, makes uh, fixed wing aircraft under the Cessna, Beechcraft and Hawker brands. Um, Textron Systems is, is kind of a conglomerate of businesses that support the defense industry, um, and they do anything from uh, unmanned aerial vehicles to our ship-to-shore connector that you see there, which is a, a, a large um, uh, kind of hybrid uh, vehicle um, that, uh, that can um, carry troops and, uh, and materials from, uh, uh, you know, from a a seagoing vessel onto land, and we build those uh, down in uh, outside of New Orleans. Um, True Simulation and Training uh, is a simulator uh, that a uh, company that we acquired to help support, um, you know, servicing our, our airplanes as well as be able to train uh, pilots on various commercial and military pilots, or train pilots on various commercial military vehicles. Um, and then uh, Textron Financial, uh, they will, uh, if anyone's interested today in, in buying an airplane uh, from us, let me know. Uh, Textron Financial can, can hook you up with the financing for that. Um, and then the last part uh, of Textron is our industrial division, uh, which contains uh, us, TSV, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about, and then also Caltex. Uh, so Caltex um, is a tier one automotive supplier. Um, and they make uh, fuel tanks and fuel systems for many of the world's largest and uh, most well-known automakers. Um, they have a facility in, in Livonia, uh, Georgia, so right up the, the road from, from me here and you guys uh, there in Atlanta. Um, this supports a lot of the automotive plants uh, that are kind of scattered throughout the Southeast. Uh, so who we are at TSV. Um, so again, this is kind of a snapshot of all the different brands that we have. Um, you know, whether it be power sports, golf, PTV, uh, turf, uh, PG&A is our parts, garments and accessories business. So it supports all of the different um, kind of uh, businesses that you see there uh, and then the ground support equipment. Uh, so what you see kind of highlighted in, in yellow is what uh, what we build today in uh, the state of Georgia. Uh, so primarily our golf and PTV here in Augusta uh, and then our ground support equipment. Um, so we have two manufacturing uh, locations currently in Kennesaw, uh, and we're currently working on um, consolidating those to one facility. Uh, so we'll have kind of everything under one roof. Um, so for the power sports business, um, it, uh, it is primarily built up in uh, Minnesota. So we have two locations, one in Thief River Falls, uh, which does most of our full vehicle assembly. And then we have an engine plant uh, in St. Cloud, just outside the Twin Cities, uh, that does all of our engines. 
um, and some of the uh, other powertrain related items um, that go into those vehicles. Uh, under the turf brand, we have uh, Jacobson and Ransoms there. Uh, those used to be uh, kind of more separated brands. Um, Jacobson was primarily the North American brand and Ransoms is primarily the European brand. Um, so we had facilities uh, both in, in North America and Europe that supported those. Uh, and over the last few years, we've consolidated all that production over to uh, over to the UK, um, where they kind of handle you know all of our turf care equipment because we did have a lot of commonalities. Um, our parts, garments, and accessories. Uh, we have various different locations um, throughout the U.S. that serve those, primarily uh, Graniteville, South Carolina, so right outside of Augusta, and then um, a location up in Ohio. Uh, where we ship all of our uh, parts and accessories for the Articat brand, um, and then Textron GSE. So it's it's kind of a family of brands again. I uh, mentioned Tug uh, Technologies, which is right outside of Atlanta, um, and then we also have a manufacturing location over in Sweden, uh, where we do our uh, one of our deicers. Uh, so it's the only deicer in the world uh, that is single person operation. Uh, so you drive from the bucket. Um, and basically can go up and, and de-ice the plane and also uh, move the vehicle around, whereas everybody else is, is kind of a two-man configuration. So a little bit more about who we are in Georgia. Uh, so again, as I mentioned before, we're headquartered in Augusta, where we currently have about 1,500 employees, um, and that's spread out through you know, salary employees and our engineering and finance and marketing um, divisions as well as uh, the folks out on the manufacturing lines um, that both assemble our vehicles uh, and also do all the fabrication. Uh, so we do a lot of metal fabrication in-house um, here, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, welding, as you see in the picture there. We have a paint line at each one of our manufacturing facilities. Uh, we do a lot of um, laser cutting um, and bending. Um, and then obviously all the all the assembly of the, the various different components that we get in from our supply chain. Um, so we're opening a, a, a facility. It's, it's more closer to Cartersville, uh, Georgia. Um, that's going to be the main site for our ground support equipment. Um, so we do have two facilities a day in Kennesaw that we're, we're kind of consolidating together, um, you know, just right up 75 a little ways. Um, so we'll have over 275,000 square feet under one roof. Um, which is, you know, replaces, like as, a, as I mentioned, two different sites with about seven different buildings today. Um, so that moves in process now. Uh, we started it um, earlier this year. Uh, we have some assembly going on uh, in Cartersville now. Some of our uh, supporting functions have moved up there, and by the end of November, uh, we'll have all of our lines running um, up there. Um, from a Textron uh, family perspective, as I mentioned previously, we do have a, a site for Caltex in Livonia. Uh, where they make fuel tanks for uh, a lot of the southeast uh, automotive plants. Um, and then in uh, Columbus, uh, Georgia, Textron Aviation uh, has a facility um, that makes pro uh, propellers for uh, small piston aircraft um, under the Macaulay brand. So electrification is, is something that's very big in, in the day-to-day -day, uh, of TSV and especially uh, my team. Uh, you know, since our inception in 1954, we've been building, you know, electric uh, vehicles. Uh, you know, we started with the first golf car using um, leftover motors from uh, B-52 bombers, um, and that was kind of what we used for traction, and we've, we've come a long way since then. Um, and so, you know, earlier this year, as we were looking at the kind of the technologies that we needed to invest in across our business, electrification was obviously something that was coming up across our, our four core businesses. Um, and so we set out to uh, stand up a team to be devoted to that. Um, so, you know, each industry, I'd say, is a, a little bit different um, as far as, you know, kind of the reason behind why they want to go to uh, electric products. Um, but in general, it's, it's at the end consumers um, that use our products as well as the companies that, that purchase vehicles from us are trying to reduce their carbon footprint. So very similar to, uh, you know, what you see. Uh, on, in the automotive space. Um, so one of the benefits of kind of consumers today is that they're becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of electric vehicles and equipment because of success in the automotive world as well as in like power tools and things like that where electric is you know becoming more of the norm. 
And so uh, it's helped us and with our messaging as we, you know, go out to our consumers and, you know, get to pitch the simplified maintenance around electric vehicles, uh, as well as, you know, much lower noise and, uh, you know, more more environmentally friendly operations. Um, So some of the major kind of technological advances uh, that have, you know, supported our move to electrification and kind of where we are in the market is um, primarily in battery technology. Um, So as automotive has, you know, relied more and more on lithium iron batteries, um, then we also have been able to, you know, take advantage of those costs. So, you know, we worked with with several different suppliers for a number of years to develop a lithium ion battery uh, to use here in Augusta. Um, And, you know, after about seven years, we finally were able to launch our our first vehicle back in 2017 uh, with a lithium ion battery in it. Um, and then this year we actually launched our, our second generation of that. Um, and so we've had a really successful partnership um, uh, through developing those. And we're kind of looking to springboard that into other parts of our business. Um, and so, you know, primarily we're replacing lead acid uh, batteries, uh, which are notorious for the maintenance that they require um, and kind of the impact to the environment uh, because of the, the, um, the way that they're made and the different ingredients that go into it. Um, and, and so it's, it's, it's been an easy sell for, you know, into the, into the industry that already was all electric or, or was, was trending towards all electric to, to go to lithium. Um, and so we're using kind of some of the things that we've gained from there uh, as we look to um, move to our other industries. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we set up a dedicated team um, that, uh, that is going to electrify all the products across those those brands that I showed you uh, before. Um, and so one of the benefits that we get is we, you know, electrify more vehicles or move from lead acid to lithium uh, is being able to take advantage of the, you know, lower weight and the more space that we create within our vehicles. Uh, so in the bottom picture there, uh, you see our new Insider bag. So this is Beneath the seat um, in one of our PTVs, our personal transport vehicles, like the the one in the picture above it, um, and because of the the size that the battery pack is today compared to the lead acid uh, battery pack that these vehicles were initially designed with, we have a lot more space. Um, so we've uh, made something uh, that instead of just you know has blank space under it, we've made something that a customer can use. Uh, you know, to put the stuff for, you know, whether it be a soccer game or, you know, the family going to the pool or something like that, where they can store their um, their items. And then when they get to where they're going, they can pull that bag out um, and just use it, um, you know, whatever, whatever they're doing that day. Um, and so these are the kind of things that we're we're trying to do, you know, to help sell our customers and help show them the benefits of electrification outside of just, you know, becoming more uh, environmentally friendly. Uh, so on the consumer side, um, especially through the pandemic last year, um, it really drove uh, the sale of our personal use vehicles. Um, and so, you know, a lot of these you see driving around in neighborhoods, um, you know, getting kids to the pool or, you know, getting to a friend's house or something like that. Um, and, you know, really it's 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 a golf car that it's based on a golf car, but it's it's something that's a, a lot more fun. Um, and can have uh, a lot more features. Um, and we were the first ones, as I mentioned back in 2017, to, to offer the, uh, the uh, lithium batteries uh, in our golf product. Um, and that carry, has carried over to the consumer products as well. Um, and we, we use that first mover advantage to introduce our second generation earlier this year, as I mentioned. Um, and with that, uh, next year in 2022, um, uh, we will largely exit the, the lead acid market. Um, and so really other than, you know, kind of a value offering for, for entry level courses, um, everything that we build will be lithium. Um, and, you know, this is something um, that opens up a whole opportunity for us as we can design vehicles around um, our lithium battery, which is much smaller than lead acid. Uh, so there in the bottom picture, uh, you see our newest vehicle that we've announced, which is the EasyGo Liberty. Um, and so this is the first vehicle in its class that uh, will offer four forward facing uh, seats. Uh, so traditionally, what you would see is a, a golf car with um, that we would put a rear facing seat on. So you'd have two passengers facing forward and two passengers facing rearward. 
Um, and this is really an industry first to have four forward facing passengers in the footprint um, of, of a traditional golf car. Um, and so I have a, a brief video that I'll show here and kind of uh, talk through some of the, the merits of the vehicle. Um, so again, this is, this is our EasyGo Liberty. Um, and really the key to this vehicle is under the front seat there. Um, so this is where we house our lithium ion battery. Uh, this is the first vehicle that really we've developed that will not have a gas offering. It will be electric only um, and it will only be lithium. Uh, and because of our lithium technology and the size that it is, it uh, plus some intellectual property that we have around this vehicle, uh, this is something that our um, our competitors will not be able to match. Um, so they'll be able to do something, but it'll have to be longer, have to be different. Um, and so this is just kind of the, the first product that we're releasing again, that's designed around our lithium battery and will not you know, have to have sacrifices for having a gas version or having a lead acid version. Um, so it, it uses a lot of parts from existing platforms. Um, so a lot of the front plastics, uh, the frame, uh, front axle, electric powertrain, a lot of that is, uh, you know, we pulled from existing vehicles that we have. Um, and so really it was just uh, kind of a packaging exercise around how we get all those things, you know, into this platform. Um, and then, you know, this they use a, a new top structure that we've been working on um, and some new plastics around that, uh, the, the rear fenders, as well as uh, kind of the center seating pod there. Um, so this is something that we had uh, fantastic results with. Um, you know, we launched this uh, on a, a surprise dealer call and it sold out within the first four hours, which was un unheard of uh, for this industry. Um, and so, you know, we're sold out for 2021. We're already looking um, to sell out for 2022. And from a manufacturing standpoint, uh, our assembly line loves it because, it, again, it uses a lot of the uh, same parts uh, from other vehicles that were already on our assembly line. Um, and, and, you know, we see it as a growth opportunity where we're not cannibalizing existing sales. You know, these are creating new sales for us where, you know, maybe somebody would have bought from one of our competitors instead of us. Uh, so it's been a really good news story for us. And again, it's, it's been very important because it's the first, um, you know, lithium uh, only product that we've that we have uh, here in Augusta. So on the ground ground support side, um, we're also moving rapidly towards uh, electric uh, vehicles. Uh, so our primary primary customers are are the airlines um, and freight carriers, and you know they're under immense pressure to reduce their carbon footprint, um, and they really have a limited number of levers that they can pull to achieve that outcome. Um, so you're not going to see uh, an electrically powered aircraft, um, you know, on, on, on the commercial side and at the size that, you know, like you see one of our, our pushbacks uh, pulling there um, anytime in the near future. You know, we, we have companies that are working on that. Textron's working on that through the aviation side of the business. Um, but the technology is just not matured enough to, to be commercially viable yet. Uh, so the airports are really looking at how they can electrify everything else uh, because that's, you know, the, the biggest part of their footprint um, outside of the, the airline or the airplanes themselves. Um, so we uh, we're working to uh, quickly uh, electrify all the different products that we have. Um, so we have our aircraft pushbacks like you see up there in the top picture. Uh, we have baggage and cargo tractors. So think of the things that you see pulling the trains uh, around at the airports, you know, getting your, your stuff from the air, airplane uh, down to the baggage handling room. Um, our uh, belt loaders, which is what's in the in the bottom uh, picture there. Uh, so, you know, you'll have a cargo tractor bring your baggage, um, you know, up to the vehicle and then they'll load it on this belt loader, which will get it up inside the plane. Um, and then the de-icers, as I, I talked about before, um, you know, that's an, another part of the business that we're looking at electrifying. Um, so we recently announced our first fleet of uh, more than 70 lithium powered uh, belt loaders. Uh, so we sell that under the Tug brand name, uh, 660E. Uh, so Delta Airlines will be purchasing those. So we're in process uh, of that order now. Um, and uh, we soon will be announcing uh, another partnership um, around electrification for some of our other uh, uh, larger vehicles outside of the belt loader. On the turf side, um, you know, uh, it's, it's another um, side of our business where we really see uh, the customers trying to improve their carbon footprint and looking at ways that they can improve it 
um, you know, more quickly than um, some of the other kind of pieces of equipment that they use. Um, so if you look at golf courses or commercial grounds care providers and even municipalities, um, you know, they have a, you know, whether it be a, a whole fleet wide or a whole company wide initiative to, to reduce their carbon footprint. Um, and so they're looking to electric turf care. The other benefit uh, that you get from electric turf care equipment is that uh, it gets rid of hydraulic systems, um, which are notorious for leaks, uh, which become very messy um, and not very great for the environment. Um, and they also can be very expensive uh, systems uh, to troubleshoot um, and to fix. And so by going all electric, you know, we're reducing the complexity and time and cost of maintaining these machines, uh, which are, you know, really beat on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, a lot of times going out mowing for hours and hours a day um, and um, seeing all different types of terrain and working with different chemicals on golf courses and things like that. Um, and so, uh, you know, again, we see uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, uh, you know, we see it a lot easier to put these together in their electrical form than in their, you know, gas or diesel driven, uh, you know, hydraulic, um, hydrostatic transmission type uh, vehicles. Um, and so the, the key for us right now is that we're developing a lot of these electric vehicles on the same platform as what we do, uh, our gas and, and diesel and hydraulic. Um, and what this allows for is in the future, uh, you know, if someone wants to retrofit, you know, electric, electric powertrain into one of these, or, uh, you know, if we look at it from an assembly standpoint, uh, you know, having the same frame um, and seating and, and different uh, uh, accessories going down the line, um, but having a few different options on which kind of powertrain that you can get um, from a manufacturing standpoint that keeps our complexity low and, and allows for higher throughput, even as we, you know, introduce more variation into our factories. Um, one of the things um, that we, uh, that we do um, on the turf side is we do utilize, you know, for a lot of our engineering expertise, um, you know, we do engineer where we, um, where we manufacture, uh, but with my team uh, being based in Augusta and also having folks at each one of our different locations, um, we're able to collaborate on, on projects. Um, so right now, my team's actually working on a, a product with the turf, uh, the turf team over in the UK. Um, so it'll be our, our next major announcement um, in January at the, at the annual GIS Turf Show, um, where you'll see um, kind of the next generation of electric vehicle technology um, and utilize some of the common battery systems uh, that we have um, with our golf product, as well as our current turf care. Uh, so the picture you see there is a uh, Eclipse 360. Uh, that is our greens mower. Uh, it's been an electric vehicle for a number of years now, but we just launched it with the new lithium technology. Um, and so we're using that as kind of our, our blueprint um, for how we enter the turf market. And we'll be able to expand upon the technologies that we've introduced there. Uh, that is a fully electric vehicle. Um, so no hydraulics. So electric cutting units, lift lower and steering and traction. Um, and today we do offer that in a few different varieties. So uh, we offer a fully electric version and then we offer a couple of hybrid versions as well. Um, so for folks that, you know, still suffer from range anxiety or, or don't think they can get, you know, a full day's work out of a, out of a battery pack, um, then we still do have those hybrid options. And that's something that we see, you know, kind of across our industries as we uh, look to electrify products is, you know, the first step may be more of a hybrid solution where we, you know, electrify all the all the bits and pieces. Um, and then it's just kind of what your source of power is, whether it's from a battery pack um, or it's from, a, a, you know, a gas or diesel engine with a, with a gen set attached. So kind of what we need um, is, or, or kind of, you know, what we need to be successful with our electrification. Um, you know, obviously electrical engineers is, is a big part of it, um, but it's, it's not the only thing that we need. Um, so we have uh, several different skill sets that we're recruiting for within electrical engineering, um, but, you know, we also cross over into fields such as chemical engineering and material science um, as we look at, you know, different materials to start making our vehicles out of, to make them lighter, um, to increase the range that we get out of these electric versions. Um, but also as we look into different energy storage and battery technologies, um, 
you know, as we develop our own batteries, um, as we work with some of our key suppliers, develop uh, different battery technologies, um, then having, you know, different expertise helps. Um, we also still need mechanical engineers because we still have a lot of functions um, within the vehicle that, that fall more into the mechanical side. So, you know, on turf vehicle that we're working on today, we still have traction systems um, and differentials. You know, we still have steering and lift lower and, you know, all these sorts of mechanical problems to solve. Um, it's just instead of, you know, hydraulic cylinder going in there, we're, we're working with our electrical engineers to find the best electrical component to go in to do the, the same uh, the same function that we used to. Um, software engineers. So this is huge for us uh, as we as we help uh, develop, test and deploy uh, the complex systems that we uh, use to charge our batteries, um, monitor battery health and, and to help optimize vehicle performance. Because uh, there are a lot of neat things that you can do when you move to an electrical system that uh, you're not able to do with, you know, a traditional um, traditional type powertrain, whether it be hydrostatic or whether it be, uh, you know, more mechanical with a with a transmission and a, and a transaxle. Uh, outside of kind of engineering, um, you know, there's a whole host of different um, opportunities for us. Um, whether it's, you know, in sourcing uh, where we need help uh, identifying new suppliers. Um, where we can acquire different technologies. So engineers can dream up some great things, uh, but if we don't have the supply base to be able to help us achieve those, um, then you know we won't be able to be successful. Uh, and the other thing is growing at, at the scale and volume um, that we need to be able to. Uh, so each one of our business is a little bit different in, in, in the scale, right? So you know you talk about ground support equipment and some of our bigger pushbacks, you may be building you know single digits of those a year or tens of those. Um, when you get to the uh, some of the other kind of higher volume ground support equipment, you know, you may be in hundreds, um, low thousands on the on the uh, turf side. You know, you're in the the low thousands to ten thousands. Um, moving up into our our off road business, we're in the you know the ten thousands, um, and then uh, into the the uh, vehicles that we build down here in Augusta, where you know we'll build over a hundred thousand vehicles uh, out of our plant here in Augusta. So one of the things that we're trying to do through the electrification team is, you know, focus on suppliers and partners that we can get that can help us across our variety of products. Um, so, you know, that we're not, you know, working with a different motor supplier at every location or, you know, working with different battery technologies across all of our different locations, but really be able to grow uh, our supply base um, with the different things that we're trying to do. Um, one of the other things uh, that we're always looking for is uh, industrial designers. Um, so, you know, a lot of our vehicles um, have been around for a long time, especially on the ground support equipment side. Um, you know, you're talking about designs that have been around since the 70s and 80s. Uh, so as we transform the powertrains that are going into these, uh, we also want to transform the look of the vehicle. Um, this is much more prevalent on the power sport side where you see a lot of aggressive styling, um, you know, whether it be on our side by sides or ATVs. Um, but, you know, year after year, you see a lot of um, a lot of focus go into making you know, making your products look more and more like automotive and and um, you know kind of having a, a family of a, of aggressive vehicles. So uh, we're currently you know recruiting for for all different sorts of positions. Um, you know within the state of Georgia, uh, you know we recruit at, at Georgia Tech and have a, a large number of our engineers that come from Georgia Tech, um, as well as uh, Georgia Southern and University of Georgia. Um, and also the Atlanta University Center. Um, and then also kind of more on the manufacturing side, we do a lot of um, recruiting through uh, Augusta, Augusta Technical College here um, locally and, and also uh, the Chattahoochee Technical College for our, uh, our ground support equipment business up in, in the Kennesaw Cartersville area um, and really across the Technical College system of Georgia. Um, and so, you know, like I said, we, we have a, a strong footprint here in Georgia for manufacturing. Um, and, you know, we're always looking to uh, acquire, you know, new and um, new and exciting uh, members to join our team. Uh, so if you're interested in applying, uh, it's, it's pretty easy. It's TSV Careers. Um, and so from there, you can uh, go and explore jobs um, and look at, uh, you know, different functions that we may have, whether it be engineering or manufacturing or sourcing. Um, and you can also filter by location. Uh, so whether you're interested with something here in Augusta um, or, uh, you know, up in the Atlanta area or even one of our other sites, you know, whether it be the UK or Sweden or Minnesota or, you know, any of our other locations, 
um, and you can do you know that that full uh, process online. Um, so you'll see right now if you go in there, uh, see a lot of job postings for both internships for next summer, uh, as well as some of our full time positions uh, that we're out recruiting on campuses uh, currently. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to uh, Dr. Brown if there are any questions that have uh, come up uh, during my talk today. Thank you so much, uh, Jay, for this this wonderful lecture. And um, I just I have a few comments to say, but before I make these comments, I, I, I'd want to encourage uh, any of the audience to submit their questions uh, in the question and answer panel. If you have any questions for, for Jay about uh, Textron Specialized Vehicles or career opportunities or, or, or anything that was presented today, uh, please submit those questions as soon as you have them. Uh, Jay, I, I, I just want to thank you and, 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 and Brandon and you know the rest of the Textron Specialized Vehicles team um, just for you know hosting us um, last summer. Um, we had some of our, our revamp students, uh, which is a, a summer program that we have at GTMI, uh, Research Experience for Student Veterans in Advanced Manufacturing and Entrepreneurship. We had uh, a group of our students uh, do a virtual tour with Textron. Um, and so it's, it, I believe we're developing a wonderful relationship <laughs> uh, with you guys. And uh, uh, next summer, we're hoping to actually have the students, you know, physically come uh, for a tour of the manufacturing plant there in Augusta and uh, 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 potentially in Kennesaw if, it, if it's ready by then but um, absolutely that would be that would be wonderful because we we've um, we've come in the past uh, to um, uh, other other manufacturing facilities in Georgia like like Kia Hyundai Mobis um, mm -hmm. but we're, we're trying to expand our our relationships um, and that you know you know, part more part of what we do, of course, we do manufacturing research and development at GTMI, but uh, we also do uh, education and, and workforce development. So mm -hmm. um, this, so we like to have local manufacturers, you know, come and give give talks and uh, let us in, you know let us know about your manufacturing operations, the new technology that's involved, um, and and particularly particularly any career opportunities uh, for the students. Uh, which you have done. So I um, <clears throat> see we, we do have a couple of questions uh, come up. So um, the first one is by Dr. Shrees Melko. He says, do you already use composite materials, uh, carbon fiber reinforced composites, or are you considering such materials to reduce weight and improve range of the vehicles? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of kind of the materials that we've looked at so far um, is around the steels that we're using. Uh, so we've kind of initiated a switch to more high strength low alloy um, so we can get this a similar strength from, uh, you know, a thinner gauge. And so that's kind of where we started uh, because of a lot, you know, pretty much all of our vehicles start have to start with a strong frame. Um, but yes, we, we absolutely are looking into um, uh, you know, different composite materials, uh, a lot of it on the plastic side, um, you know, when we look at getting into structural plastics. Um, so something where, you know, we'll, we'll glass fill or, you know, we'll put in different um, kind of fillers in there um, to improve the strength, like on a floorboard of our golf car or a rear bumper or something like that. Um, but what I think you'll see is as, as we get more into developing uh, vehicles like the Liberty that are only going to be an electric vehicle and, and like I said, that will, um, you know, have, you know, very important range targets, uh, then we'll start to introduce more and more exotic um, kind of uh, uh, materials. Uh, and the benefit of being a part of Textron is, is that something that Bell um, and Textron Aviation are, are very familiar with uh, because of the processes that they do today on their aircraft. Um, so, you know, we kind of have an idea already of, of how kind of what the cost structure of some of that looks like. Um, and so we'll be able to kind of piggyback on, you know, what they've learned and what they've done over the years to, to make sure that we're, we're successful. Sounds good. So <clears throat> we have another question actually. Um, and I, I don't think this was intentional, but, uh, the, the, the question is, um, I, this, 
the audience member was surprised that you did not mention <laughs> Kennesaw State <laughs> as a site for recruitment, yeah. um, as they have they have the only mechatronics program in yeah. the state, plus large and active uh, programs in other departments. Yep, that that was my mistake. So we we do uh, we definitely recruit at Kennesaw State. Um, I've had several interns um, come through from that program, um, and, and another one that I didn't mention was was also Mercer. I uh, actually saw a. Uh, uh, um, resume come through the other day from that mechatronics program. Um, so yeah, that, that's absolutely uh, a school that, um, that we see, uh, especially for that ground support equipment uh, business that is up in the, in the Kennesaw area. It's it, actually our current location is right there by campus. Um, and I think a lot of our interns actually live on campus um, during the summer there. Um, so that's, that's definitely another uh, location that we recruit at. Yeah. Speaking of Kennesaw, um... Do you have a, a timeline for the future operations in Kennesaw as far as that facility? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the the primary plan right now is to have all of our manufacturing lines up and running by the end of November there. Um, and so we're, you know, we're actively moving things over there now. We're a little bit to the benefit of kind of where the airline industry is right now. Uh, it's actually rebounding a little bit kind of quicker than we thought it would, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, we've been using a little bit of the downtime that we've had to be able to start moving some of our operations over there. Uh, we also consolidated our parts and accessories warehouse to a facility we had down here in Graniteville. But yeah, I think by the end of the year, we'll be fully functional up there. Um, and then it's just kind of building out our production capabilities, uh, kind of as, you know, customer demand comes back. Um, but you'll see, you know, we, we have uh, several engineering uh, postings up there right now because we're also growing that team. Um, as we, you know, add more and more things, the product roadmap, uh, especially around electrification and, and what we can do for our customers, uh, both in new vehicles and also uh, around, um, you know, repowering existing vehicles that we have out there. So, so will that facility focus more on, on the uh, aerospace vehicles and support vehicles for aerospace? Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, so that, that will be all. So that will be all ground support equipment. Um, so it, it primarily um, what we build under the Tug and Premier brands. So Premier is kind of the North American de-icer uh, brand that we have. Um, and so all those vehicles that are currently built, we have uh, two facilities there uh, in Kennesaw and, and they're just moved up the interstate a little bit under under one roof. Um, and we also do a, a little bit uh there under the Cushman name brand. So it's one of the name brands that we use here in Augusta. Um, we have kind of an industrial uh, commercial line uh, of vehicles. So it's uh, focused on material movement around warehouses. Uh, so small tuggers and, um, and vehicles like that. Um, those also will be uh, built up in the, uh, in the Cartersville facility. Excellent, excellent. I think, I think it's a good segue just to um, talk about uh, actually, our, our next couple of seminars uh, for this series are focused on composites um, mm -hmm. and, and, in fact, aerospace as well. So, um, actually, our next lecture is uh, Composites, Automation, and Data in Aerospace Manufacturing, uh, given, given by the former Senior Director in Advanced Manufacturing and Materials at Boeing. Um, so, <clears throat> I think there will definitely be some, some relevance there, particularly on the, on the mechanical side. Uh, with, with using uh, composites. And then I, th I think the, the lecture after that, we have an international speaker uh, from the UK to, that is also going to talk about uh, composites manufacturing. Um, so please stay tuned <laughs> uh, for uh, the future lectures in this series. And um, uh, I, would, I would also just in encourage everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're going to actually, rec we have recorded this session and we're going to uh, post it uh on our website a link on our website so um if if there are others who were not able to view it um they should be able to view it at, at a later date um so thank i want to just thank everyone uh for attending this session um right now i don't see any additional questions um so i think we're just gonna uh close the session so i just want to thank you again uh jay uh for for leading this discussion i'm, I'm excited about uh, our partnership with you guys and, and, and working with, with students here at Georgia Tech. Um, is, we certainly have a lot of t talented students and they're looking for opportunities. 
Um, and we, we appreciate just learning about y your business and what you guys, uh, you know, have upcoming in the future as far as uh, expanding your, your manufacturing operations. Um, so <clears throat> thank you so much um, and uh, have a great Monday. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.